Fold. Keep the most important hand in the middle. That's what they came to see. Big hands getting paid. Uh, so this guy going with his his raise, that's cool. You know, we're just going to feign weakness and be like, oh, tough spot with my uh, King-10 here. I, I, I guess I can call. Uh, please don't make the pot too big, man. I just... I just want to show it down for cheap, SG. But there's no draw on the flop, so he couldn't be like free card, free card playing me with a flop raise. Uh, I definitely just think he has a hand that he's good to go with. Whether it's a set of fives, because that's what he should have, or just a king X, because he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's overvaluing hand. I don't know, but we about to find out. Just a king, drawing dead. Thanks for the monies. And we are tied for chip lead in the biggest buy-in one that we're playing. That's cool. Okay, so we're gonna raise up the button here with uh, the ace eight, and we're definitely calling the big blinds all in because we'll be getting good pot odds. Um, unlike when he called our shove, we have a lot more invested in this pot already than he did, so we're getting a better price. We're getting better odds on our call than he was. Uh, so this ace is a good card to fire a snack and barrel on. So we're just gonna do the 345. If we get shoved, does it suck? Yeah, but um, you know you don't just play draws so you can see if you can hit your draws. You you play draws to see if you can fold. You use them as your backup. Your main goal is to try to get your opponent to fold your hand. If you can't, then you see if you make your draw. Now, I think he's probably willing to call us with an eight, and if he has ace, he's obviously calling with that. Seven's calling, but we do have the draws beat, so if he has nine, 10, or six, five, we're winning anyway. We don't need a bet to bluff to that, so I'm just gonna check back. We're gonna lose if he has uh, an eight or an ace, but I don't really think he would fold an eight necessarily to a shove. So that's cool. It looks like he had a weaker draw and we got the maximum out of that hand. And we also made things a lot easier because if we had checked back on the turn, he could have bluffed into us on the river and that would have been an annoying spot. Can we see what he had? Oh, right. America's card room does not allow you to see what your opponent's mucked cards are, which is good. It, pro it protects the recreational players. Uh, and people be like, well, doesn't protect me, man. I want to see their cards. I want to get more information. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but look at it this way. Uh, when people know that you can't see what they had if they muck, they're more likely to make a really bonehead call on the end because they're like, well, even, you know, I'm going to call to see if I'm right. And if I'm wrong, whatever. No one's going to know what I had. It's, it's not going to matter. So you're more likely to get just like silly, silly ass hero calls from people, which is good for your bottom line. Okay, so uh, we are definitely going to raise and call off with the king nine. The reason that I kept it super small with uh, the ace king before is because it's a double or nothing again. We only need to eliminate one more player and everyone's paid. So there's no need for me to get into a big confrontation with uh, that dude who has chips as Saliso. Um, even though, you know, I have a great hand, I have tons of equity, like I'm fine, like playing the pot with him. The fuck's going on here? I don't know. Well, you don't know what's going on. Just get out of the way. Um, there's no incentive to me trying to like stack him or put tons of pressure on him. All I'm doing is trying to maintain a stack uh, while we wait for the other player to bust and we get into the money. So that's why I played it in the fashion that I did. I'm, I'm just keeping the pot as small as possible. Yes, I have him covered, but you know, let's say he he hit top pair and we run it. You know, we're taking a 50-50 for. 2,500 chips, where if we lose, we're, we're still like in second, but it's a lot uh, more stressful to make that top three with the same stack as some of the other players than it is when you just have everybody crush. And we have another elimination. Queen KO KO gets the KO. And now we are one away from getting paid in the buck 50, double or nothing, too. What's going on with these threes? I guess it was all in pre flop. What's going to be going on with these priests? Maybe all in pre flop? How many blinds does he have? 20? Yeah, we, we could stuff it in his face if he wants to raise. I mean, small pairs aren't exactly hands that play that well post-flop, so I know just how badly we want to take a flop with them, so just whacking it in may be the way to go instead. Um, all right, so we got some, some pretty short-handed action going on. Four-handed, 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 four-handed poker. That's what's up. So this guy's raising. Do we want to run it with the sevens, or do we want to respect his cutoff range? Uh, I think our hand is good enough versus his cutoff range because he can probably open any pair. And we do have the stack that we can afford it. This table three, the bottom left one, unlike the other ones, is a regular sit and go where we got to get to the top two. 
And there is a difference in payout between first and second place. So there is more incentive to get there. All right, no eight ball. And we're making our first wee bit of coinage. Spade is good for the job too. Jack and spade, sure, why not? Double, double the fun for us. Double the pain for him. Congratulations, you made the money. Let's uh, bring in our next S and G. Cool. So that's that's a good start to the session. Uh, all right. Um, I think it's plus EV to just shove. So that's what I'm gonna do. These guys can apply a lot of pressure to me if I just raise small and give them the chance to take a flop and stuff. So rather than doing that, I'm just gonna jam. Now that may go counter to the Dawn strategy, I'm not sure, but I think in the case where you are the shover, you can go a lot better than when you are the caller. So since I'm the one putting the pressure in here, and I think I have an above average hand for this situation, I think that my shove is okay. If there were antis in the middle, I would be almost certain that my shove is okay, uh, but without them, I'm not sure. Also, I am the guy who's in last place, so I have to do what I can to keep pace with Phillies fan over there and not fall too far behind. Uh, we're gonna limp in with our passive friend. He's letting us see a free flop. Uh, sure, we can bet. We did catch a piece, so we don't mind doing the whole showdown thing, but it is a pretty weak piece, so we don't mind taking control of the action. Here on the bottom left table, I mean, whatever, if he's got a heart, he's got us. I don't think he's gonna value bet uh, with too many of them or bluff with too many of them, so we can just check, try to showdown. Do we think we're good here with the jack ever? Well, if he doesn't have a heart, we are good. Taking that sizing though, um, I'm gonna give him credit here and just let it go. And I'm also gonna give this guy, oh, he showed us the bluff. All right, all right. Good hand, Mr. Pringles. Caught us with that sexy turn card. And that's an interesting spot because I did, I, I went against like what I said. I did say, I don't think he's gonna be value betting too many of those flushes. If he's checking most of the time he has a flush, then most of the time he's betting he's actually bluffing because there's like a couple of nut flushes he can have. But he'd probably bet those on the turn. Uh, and what's the turbo is just top two paid. All right, whatever. I'm just going to give him the jamboree here with the ace 10 suited. Um, yeah, if he's, if he's only betting with like the very best of the flushes, the ace and the king, and if he might have bet those on the turn, then uh, most of the time he's bluffing, betting on the rivers actually bluffs because, well, it's, there are very few like great hands he can have and there are tons of... Other hands can have. I mean, he raised the button and he debed on a jack high all heartboard. There's a lot of hands he can have. Oh, I feel like such a bitch. Fold into that. He's giving us such a good price, 205. The old like. I don't want to give up on this pot, but I don't really want to actually risk that much. I'm just like bet like. Can I bet? Can I bet less than the min? Like, is that a, no? Okay, minimum then. Uh, I think we should be opening hands like Jack nine at this point four handed. We got a couple of really short stacks who won't want to play, and Mr. Pringles, obviously we've seen, is fine. So we have the open ender. We're obviously not gonna fold, and I was just thinking whether or not we'd see bet. Do we want to reshove on Husky Max? He has a 100% fold to three bets, so let's let's shove it in there and see what happens. And let's see if we can rip off something on the turn, or get a or get a shutdown from Mr. Pringles. He's still betting, but uh, we do we still have the draw, and he's giving us that price. So we're gonna call again, and I guess we could raise even. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna raise. I'm gonna raise for the cases if he has like king queen or something that he won't get to take that to the river and maybe hero call us. But at this point, uh, we're just gonna check because I think he's probably got the ace to take that line. Um, we also got a free showdown, but that didn't really help us all that much. Okay, fours is a pair and pairs are usually good. Three handed. So we're gonna put that in, and I'm just gonna rearrange my tables a little bit so I can stop moving my head all over the place and be a little bit more focused. I'm still gonna be pretty distracted. This is pretty intense action. I'm not used to playing this many shorthanded tables, but hey, it's kind of fun. All right, this guy's just putting everyone all in, nothing we can do, and he's gonna be able to do that a lot now that he has uh, such a sizable chip lead 
over everyone else. Five dollar double or nothing is my seven good. Yes, it is. What was he calling me with? I don't know. I don't know, and there's no way to find out. All right, ace nine. This is a little more risky because we're going into four people instead of three. So I'm just gonna go with men. Oh, this guy's all in. Iso with ace queen, and this guy's raising the button. Resteal with ace ten. We're gonna get it. Uh, so he's got king 10, that's good for us. And I think Husky's gonna be folding very often here, so that's also good for us. Now, we got owned here by queen KO KO because Philly's fan is so short, all we have to do to get paid is outlast him. It doesn't matter if we pick up chips. Oh nice, we got him dominated. Sweet! Uh, so we don't want to take a gamble with queen KO KO. Even if we think he has like king queen or something, or like a pair of fives, yeah, where we're flipping. It's like, do we want to take the 50-50 with him? And still not even guarantee money, or do we think we have a better than 50-50 chance of Phillies fan going out before us? That's the only thing we have to consider. God, there's another one starting? Holy shit, man. It's going to have to be like a two-part series. Uh, so Queen KO KO can just put us both all in here, but if she chooses not to, we will definitely be snapping off Phillies fan. Uh, we don't want to take variance against the other players because doubling through them doesn't get us into the money. But busting, playing a pot with Phillies fan would lead to busting Phillies fan, therefore getting us in the money and guaranteeing us a payout. So willing to do that. Uh, so at this point, uh, the $3 regular six max, that's pretty cool. We are down to three handed and this pays two spots. So our goal is to reach the top two there. And Nathan, you got a good enough hand to call. He does a six against 710 all brown not brown, all gold cards would do it. Three is also good enough to get us the win. Way to go us. Uh, I'm just gonna put Lamont all in here. If he's got an ace, he'll probably call. And if he's got like a king queen, he'll call. And let's bring over yet a double or nothing, SNG. Keep the action coming. That's what they wanna see. Uh, I don't know what this guy's limping with. We could make an aggressive play and just put the chips in, but I don't think we need to. This guy's limping tons. We could definitely isolate in the bottom right there, but I also don't mind playing these small pots with him. He's playing pretty passive. And let's see, no ante. No, I'll be priced in to call people's shoves on table one, so I'm not gonna open too wide. I'm gonna be pretty selective about the spots that I open on. Uh, we're still not dealing with antes, so I don't need to go too crazy. All right, BVB, queen nine is a above average hand on table three. Oh shit, I'm sitting out of a $10 double or nothing sit and go, and I've been sitting out of it for 10 minutes. Well, that's not good. Okay, we're uh, value betting, blocking betting, free showdowning with the king jack. Uh, if we get raised, uh, easy fold. Um, and if we bet bigger, we're never getting called by worse, but by betting 100, uh, we can definitely get called by some more sands. And you see Mitutoyo is uh, really pretty pretty ambitious with this stuff. All right, Husky, we're all in. If he's trapping us, cool. It's just sit and go pressure. Uh, we're in first place. He's in second place. He doesn't want to battle with us, so uh, he can't really do anything. If he opens here, we're going to put him all in. If he limps in, we're going to put him all in. If he folds, we're going to put Lamont all in. Uh, because Lamont is not the type of player who's going to be, you know, stealing aggressively. If he was, you know, if he liked to three bet all in a lot, then uh, ooh, this is this is curious because we're probably ahead of the button shoving range here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the gamble here because if we call and beat this guy, the sit and goes just ours, and if we lose to him, we're still in second place. So yeah, we got him, Dom. Um, and that's, that's a good start because there are some cards that can dead him. And that is one when it comes out twice. So now we're in a pretty sweet position in this $10 Turbo 6 Max. Just trying to keep up with all the action. And in the bottom left, we're going to limp in so that we can see the flop three-way. We just want to um, have as many chances to chip down at Poker Brat Jr. as possible so that we can just get to heads up in this thing. And I got two options. I can min-raise here to build a pot against Swan Dawn, but I don't mind letting him see a free flop because if he catches a piece, he may then stack off. So I'd rather give him the opportunity to catch something rather than shut him out of the pot uh, this early on. So yeah, the, if we can play three with Poker Brat, that's a better chance that either me or Mr. Pringles wins the pot. 
and that's what we want. I just want Poker Brat to get chipped down so that we can get into the payout structure and then we can start. Oh, hello, Aces. And hello, Minbet against Swan Dawn. Gave him a chance. He didn't hit. No biggie. No biggie, biggie, biggie. And we're just going to go max pressure here. Could Mr. Pringles be bluffing? Definitely. But with Poker Brat being so short, I'm just going to preserve my stack. And that's a pretty weak bet. Um, if I were shot, this guy Limp called it off with 9 10 suited. Shoving with that hand? Sure. Limp calling? Terrible. America's card room dot net. Uh yeah, we get a stack in grips dot com. Tell you how to get a stack in the flops. I'll be smashing the pots. I'll be